Hi everybody, Dr. Chris Hoff here. Another time, another kitchen table talk, and today we are talking about self sabotage. And I should let you know this is just a prop because I've already have had so much coffee I almost put myself into an anxiety attack. But that's just how I roll. So anyway, self sabotage. So um, I, you know, this is for all the people that have um, family, friends even themselves that might, you know, have a relationship with blowing their lives up at particular times. I used to do that a lot, not so much anymore, every once in a while, but not so much anymore. But, you know, I want to share with you what I've come to believe about self-sabotage. And uh, essentially, I, I now believe that, it, that most often self-sabotage is actually an inability to tolerate uncertainty or liminal space. So, um, and um, I don't care what it is, either in relationships, uh, maybe moving away from uh, substances or addiction uh, or um, whatever else, you know, our, our life, we're always confronted with, I believe, um, these threshold moments where we're, we're invited into stepping into a liminal space and, um, and that kind of thing. And oftentimes uh, we're drawn to moving back to what's familiar, uh, even if it's harmful to ourselves and others. So uh, I now conceptualize, often conceptualize, not all the time, often conceptualize self-sabotage as um, just this, this, inabil this inability to tolerate uncertainty or liminal space. So. Um, what is what is helpful in this case? So I've come to you know want to talk more about these days about liminal space. Um, I know maybe people who have practiced narrative therapy or narrative practitioners are quite familiar with the idea of liminal space or the betwixt and between. Michael White wrote about it a long time ago um, and has spoken of it. But uh, the the word liminal comes from the Latin word limen, meaning threshold, any point of entering or beginning. A liminal space is the time between what was and what is next. It's a place of transition, oftentimes waiting, and most oftentimes not knowing. And um, it can be argued that liminal space is where all transformation takes place if we learn to wait and let it form us. So um, the problem with uh, this space often is that when we become aware of our own liminality, most of us, if we're honest, don't know who to become or how to navigate this transition, that this space is often very scary. And uh, liminality goes against the grain. The more uncertain we are um, in response to events of our lives, uh, the more they feel beyond our control, the more we want to plant our feet more solidly. Uh, into um, familiar ground. So, and that's why you'll see oftentimes to, when you watch people that get characterized as self-sabotage, oftentimes you'll see them, you know, turning back to ways of being, behavior, whatever, that is often harmful, maybe even harmful to us. And we just are exasperated why that happened. So, so I've come to conceptualize it in this way. And the way that I've been starting to work with it, even in my own life, and you know, we've all been in the last year kind of forced into liminal space with the pandemic, the lockdown, COVID, uh, all of it is kind of a forced, um, um, impo imposed liminal space on all of us. But Michael White wrote that, it's imp that it is important to gauge in predictions of the experiences that one might expect during these times. So. The work I often think for ourselves and also, you know, as a therapist working with others, is how do we help people kind of predict what some of the experiences they have in these spaces are. Um, one, one way of doing this in a therapy of composition, for example, I've become very interested in, in scenario thinking or working with future scenarios. Um, doctor, according to Dr. Renata Tzizek, I think I'm saying that right, scenarios are the act of improvising the unseen. I love that, improvising the unseen. Born out of uh, scenario, kind of scenarios were kind of born out of 16th century Italian street theater where the um, practice was to disperse with a full script and construct 
performances around scenarios or a scenario. And so you can see how this kind of work, this kind of um, way of working can actually support people in moving. And I'm going to talk more about this in another video. But so, so when you see something, and maybe I'm talking about this, so when you see somebody that gets characterized as self-sabotaging, maybe um, we can look at it with a little more clarity or maybe look at it with a little more compassion that oftentimes people are in very uncomfortable, uncertain spaces. And, it, and even ourselves, if we find our, found ourselves in those similar spaces, that we would just as much want to turn back to what is known and familiar. Um, and, um, and a lot of us do that. So, uh, so in our own lives, in a nutshell, in our own lives, and if we're helping others, um, what are some practices we can do to predict what possible experiences we might, not outcomes, uh, outcomes, but some experiences we might have in stepping into further into uh, um, into uh, uncertainty and liminal space. So always lean into uncertainty. This is our task. I'm going to leave you with a Richard Rohr quote. He's a Franciscan monk. Uh, he wrote a beautiful piece on uh, liminal space, and I'm going to leave it with you here. This is how I'm going to end it. Where we are, this is what he says, quote, where we are betwixt and between the familiar and the completely unknown, there alone is our old world left behind. While we are not yet sure of the new existence, that's a good space where genuine newness can begin. Get there often and stay as long as you can by whatever means possible. This is the sacred space where the old world is able to fall apart and a bigger world is revealed. If we don't encounter liminal space in our lives, we start ide idealizing normalcy, unquote. Richard Rohr, love that. And if you want me to send you that quote, I can. Uh, so um, instead of blowing up our lives, lean into uncertainty. That's my message for today. And just a reminder, I'm doing a, a workshop, a free webinar uh, for therapists that are interested in getting into consulting or coaching, executive coaching, leadership coaching within organizations. Um, that'll be on May 27th, 5 p.m. Pacific, free webinar. Uh, there, find a link at my website, drchrishoff.com, or at my Instagram at drchrishoff. And that's it. So uh, I'm going to do an empty coffee cup toast. Peace. As always, thanks for watching.